What specific problem does the new method or algorithm aim to solve? The new method or algorithm aims to solve the problem of hallucinations in language models by detecting when the model provides incorrect or hallucinated responses. The method focuses on quantifying epistemic uncertainty in the model's predictions, which arises from a lack of knowledge about the ground truth. By decoupling epistemic and aleatoric uncertainty, the algorithm can effectively deal with multi-response queries and identify when the model's uncertainty is primarily due to lack of knowledge rather than randomness in the prediction problem. The goal is to detect when the model's responses are hallucinated by measuring how far the language model's output distribution is from the ground truth distribution. The algorithm uses an information-theoretic metric of epistemic uncertainty based on mutual information to quantify the gap between the model's derived distribution over responses and the ground truth. This metric allows for the detection of hallucinations and provides a score-based method for abstention when the model's predictions are deemed unreliable. How does the proposed method or algorithm work? Illustrate step by step. The proposed method works by estimating the epistemic uncertainty of a language model's responses to queries. This is achieved through an iterative prompting procedure that constructs a joint distribution over multiple responses derived from the language model. The key idea is to measure how far the language model's distribution is from the ground truth distribution. The method quantifies epistemic uncertainty by calculating the callback Leibler divergence between the language model's pseudo-joint distribution and the ground truth distribution. This metric helps identify when the language model's responses may be hallucinated. A computable lower bound on this uncertainty is derived using mutual information, which can be estimated using a finite sample from the language model. The method then applies a score-based hallucination detection algorithm, where a threshold is determined through calibration to decide when the language model should abstain from making a prediction. The algorithm uses the estimated uncertainty metric as a score to determine the strength of belief in the model's responses, allowing for effective detection of hallucinations. The method is evaluated on various question-answering datasets, showing improved performance compared to baseline methods in detecting hallucinations, especially on queries with higher uncertainty or multiple valid responses. What are the theoretical or practical benefits of using this method? The theoretical benefits of using the proposed method in the paper lie in the ability to quantify epistemic uncertainty in language models effectively. The method provides a computable lower bound on epistemic uncertainty through mutual information estimation, allowing for a rigorous measure of how well the language model approximates the ground truth. This metric is insensitive to aleatoric uncertainty, enabling the identification of hallucinations in model responses. Additionally, the method offers a data-dependent estimation of the expected missing mass, which can be crucial for controlling the estimation error and ensuring accurate uncertainty quantification. The method's reliance on ZIF distributions and concentration rates further enhances its practical benefits as it allows for fast convergence of the expected missing mass, especially in heavy-tailed distributions like natural languages. Practically, the proposed method provides a score-based hallucination detection algorithm that can be used to design abstention policies in language models. By utilizing the mutual information score as a measure of epistemic uncertainty, the method enables the system to abstain from providing responses when the uncertainty in the prediction is high. This can lead to improved decision-making in scenarios where the model's confidence in its responses is low ultimately enhancing the reliability and accuracy of the language model. The method's performance in experiments on closed-book open-domain question-answering tasks showcases its effectiveness in detecting hallucinations and making informed decisions based on uncertainty levels in model predictions. Overall, the method offers a practical approach to enhancing the robustness and trustworthiness of language models, 
by quantifying and leveraging epistemic uncertainty effectively. How is the method validated or tested? The method is validated or tested through experiments on closed-book open-domain question-answering tasks using various datasets such as Trivia QA, Ambig QA, and a dataset synthesized from WordNet. The experiments compare the proposed method based on mutual information estimation with several baseline methods, including the probability of the greedy response, semantic entropy method, and a self-verification method. The precision recall trade-off is considered for the different methods on the datasets. The performance of the proposed method is evaluated by comparing it to the baselines in terms of precision and recall on single-label and multi-label queries. Additionally, the method is tested on combined datasets to assess its performance when handling diverse outputs with high entropy. The thresholds for abstention policies are determined on calibration datasets, and the resulting policies are evaluated on test sets to measure error rates, precision, and recall. The experiments are repeated multiple times to calculate mean values and confidence intervals, providing a robust assessment of the proposed method's performance in detecting hallucinations and making accurate predictions based on epistemic uncertainty metrics. What results were achieved with this new method? The new method proposed in the paper achieved better results compared to baseline methods on closed-book open-domain question-answering tasks. The method focused on detecting hallucinations in language models, by quantifying epistemic uncertainty using an information-theoretic metric based on mutual information. The method outperformed the baseline methods, such as the probability of the greedy response, semantic entropy method, and self-verification method, in detecting hallucinations. The proposed method showed improved precision recall trade-offs on datasets like Trivia QA and Ambig QA, especially when dealing with multilabel queries. When combined with a WordNet dataset containing high-entropy queries, the proposed method demonstrated enhanced abstention properties compared to the semantic entropy method. The method was effective in handling diverse outputs of the language model, particularly in scenarios where the LLM's predictions were more varied and had higher entropy. Overall, the results showed that the proposed method based on mutual information estimation was successful in detecting hallucinations and improving decision-making in language models, especially in scenarios with multi-label queries and diverse outputs. What are the limitations or drawbacks of the method? The limitations or drawbacks of the method proposed in the paper include 1. Dependence on prompt construction. The method heavily relies on the construction of prompts to ensure independence between responses, which may not always hold true if the prompts are not carefully designed. 2. Finite support approximation. The method requires estimating mutual information using a finite sample, which may introduce errors due to the potentially infinite support of the language model. 3. Slow convergence. The expected missing mass which affects the estimation error may converge slowly as the sample size increases, leading to potential inaccuracies in estimating epistemic uncertainty. 4. Limited generalization. The method's performance may vary depending on the dataset composition, with single-label datasets showing similar performance to the proposed method as they do not challenge the model's uncertainty estimation capabilities. 5. Threshold calibration. The method relies on setting a threshold for hallucination detection, which needs to be tuned on a holdout sample, making it sensitive to the specific task at hand. 6. Performance on high-entropy queries. The method's performance may degrade when faced with queries with high entropy, as demonstrated when combining predominantly single-label datasets with multi-label datasets. 7. Abstention threshold sensitivity. The method's effectiveness may be impacted by the need for different calibration thresholds for datasets with varying levels of label diversity, potentially leading to suboptimal performance in mixed datasets. 8. Performance comparison. While the proposed method outperforms some baselines, it may not significantly surpass other methods like the semantic entropy method in scenarios where the language model has low entropy on multi-label queries.
9. Methodological complexity. The method involves intricate calculations and assumptions, such as the ground truth independence assumption and the estimation of mutual information, which may introduce complexities in implementation and interpretation. 10. Experimental setup. The method's evaluation heavily relies on specific experimental setups and dataset combinations, which may limit its generalizability to different types of tasks or datasets. What future work do the authors suggest? The authors suggest future work in several areas based on the findings of the paper. Firstly, they propose exploring the application of the proposed method to more diverse datasets, with a mix of single-label and multi-label queries, to further evaluate its performance in handling different types of queries. Secondly, they recommend investigating the calibration of thresholds for abstention policies on datasets with varying levels of entropy in the LLM outputs to improve the method's adaptability to different types of queries. Additionally, the authors suggest exploring the impact of different scoring functions on hallucination detection to enhance the overall performance of the method. Furthermore, they propose studying the behavior of the proposed method on datasets with heavy-tailed distributions, such as natural language datasets, following a ZIF distribution, to understand how the method performs in such scenarios. Lastly, the authors hint at the potential for further research in refining the estimation of epistemic uncertainty and its application in detecting hallucinations in language models.